Hey there everyone, this is Lifer, going back to my playthrough of Beach Odyssey 3, and in this part we are going to get, going to do the 14th, no, the 15th and 16th floors of the 4th Stratum. So let's just move on, and we'll see Rask out a lot, lot, long, long time from now, whenever I grind her off screen to about level 40. <laughs> but until then, she's kind of gone. She's not, it's just that, as I said a million times before, big droids are hard to implement into teams. They, they just are. Also, this is a little bit annoying. Yeah, that it totally exists. I completely thought that was a, a switch point, but I forget that you have to be facing the switches to use them. So I wasn't wrong the first time when I came that way, and I thought that was a switch. Alright. B-15th floor, the snare that tests courage. You sit into the stairs on the, B, uh, on the 15th floor, where the engraving Olympia spoke of should be found. You look around and feel her presence behind you, as if she had always been close by. Zarin's guild arrival confirmed, I will proceed to explain the engraving. Olympia's speech is her usual mechanical, a monotone. This was once part of Armoro, the Abyssal King used it to carry the Exegules Festival uh, rite. Since the Calamity, it has been abandoned to the Deep Ones as their nest. However, the engraving was the Exegules means of communicating with man, including the Abyssal King. Read it and you will understand the Abyssal King's words, as well as the uh, Yixedril's way of thinking. Uh, the engraving is to the north. It it it, it, uh, it is still inscribed by, uh, in that hall. Employ the powder there. Uh, if you take the armored route, Kadra will stop you instead and still explain everything to you anyway. So it doesn't matter which route you take, you get stopped by someone. That Olympia leaves as if there's nothing left to say. You consider searching for the northern hall. No, okay, no northern hall. But there's, uh, see if there's more to explore. Now, this is some of my, amongst my favorite floors of the game, or these two. Because it's, it takes advantage of pits. Yeah, the, yeah, there's pits on this. And it has the most interesting quest, and there's just the most interesting enemies to pop up on these two floors. Uh, it's some of my two, favorite two floors in the game. So, you're gonna see me being very happy about this. Okay, first thing over here is that the, I don't think there's anything over here... And though my memory fails me and where all the pits are, well, you'll know where they are because, that well, they're right there. You can see it in front of your face. And essentially, you'd have to take advantage of uh, where the pits would take you. And it end up uh, always taking you places that are interesting. In, in fact, I think there's treasure down this one. The 16th floor, a blowing bladed wind. Uh, the same types of enemies appear on both of these floors. The stronger ones are more prone to approaching towards the end of this floor, though. Otherwise, there's not too much to worry about. Okay, we got upstairs, and meet one of the new enemies of this floor, the Cursed Knight. The Cursed Knight ha is like the Swordfish, except he's a lot more defensive and just as annoying. Uh, he I don't remember his attacks. So we're gonna find that out together, and... Just start going up against the big snakehead, because he's still probably the more annoying of these two enemies. Uh, if you want to think of it, think of the big snakeheads as the, uh, the big, uh, the birds back on the second floor, how, how much of a pain they were until you could fight them. Big snakehead's kind of a big deal. And... There we go. That's, this should do us a lot of good right here. Chris Knight does pretty decent physical damage to you, but I'm gonna lower his offense, so he's gonna be a lot less of a pain. As I, you know, just... Beat the crap out of the big snakehead. It, there's not much else to say. I would use Vincent's uh, lower defense attack, but I don't see any need for it. Okay, the knight's weak to all magical attacks, not just fire. In case you were wondering. It makes him extremely easy to beat, if you ask me, and... In all personality, that's pretty much all the knight does. He, he is more of a pain if you have a less magical-centered team. He's more weak to the elements than he is to a physical element, so... Take it with that as you wish. I'm gonna see what's this way. Nothing. And I get to... Okay, I'm just gonna check the end of the hallway. Sometimes at the end of these, through these hallways, there's shortcuts and other things from around the other places on the same floor. You don't have to take note of them, just try to find them on your way. Okay, when you go up the stairs, you'll be on the other side of the pit, which is a little bit obvious. But, you know, it has to... has to be there. 
and there's pits everywhere. You're going to be able to see every pit you can uh, walk in on this floor. Do not worry about them being invisible. There will be invisible pits later in the game. Don't, wor don't worry your little heads, there will be invisible pits later in the game. Those are complete jerk moves. But otherwise, the, the pits here are not so bad, and they're necessary for puzzle solving and figuring out your way to continue. Uh, we got another pit up here. All three of these pits take you into a different hallway, and I'm thinking one of these hallways has a treasure in it, so I'm gonna be following and going through them. Yeah, see? Treasure. So it's not completely... Uh, it's not a complete waste of time if you fall into a pit. Think of it as sometimes you can get a ward out of it. Uh, we get a Tempest script. Oh boy, Tempest, oh. I kind of like the Tempest script. It's kind of... Like the Inferno script in a sense, but it's... Uh, I'm gonna have to show you. Uh, hang on, I'll, I'll figure out what tactic this is called. I don't remember exactly right now. This gives me the perfect time to get this down to. Uh, Typhoon Bolt, deal powerful bolt damage to all enemies at the start of the turn. So it's like Hellfire and Absolute Zero, except it's for Thunder Attacks. And I personally like using them on, the, on these floors in case of mass other spawns, and I just don't want to deal with them. I can just use Sarah and Gandra to deal with that. Otherwise, not that great. I'll put Regroup Tactic on the rest of them, and that'll be fine. I, I usually like using Wind Tactic, Regroup Tactic, the Hellfire, uh, Absolute Zero, and, and... Oh, what was this called? It's called Tempest, but it was a different tactic name. Alright, as I said, I like getting the script name, so... Hang on, I'm just gonna do... Wait. Oh. No, that's just gonna tell me what it is. Okay, limit, and it's called Typhoon Bolt. So that'd be Typhoon... ...and Bolt. And this one doesn't have the typo on it, it says random at turn end. That's what the others should say. I wonder why the others are typoed and this one isn't. Maybe it's because this one's found in the labyrinth and they were thinking correctly when they made this? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. That's just kind of interesting how the other two were typoed and this one isn't. This one describes exactly what it's supposed to do. Well, exactly what the other two do as well. And this will take me back on the other side of this pit, and I think we'll be able to get back to the stairway from here. Here if I want to go back to the surface ever. So it's not necessary to... It's never been necessary to bring a thread or anything, it's just a lot more convenient. But in this game, my threads are my people. I mean, Vincent, Tereska was, was basically used as a thread when I was using her. You know, I just like using a, a farmer with two market. It's just a lot easier, in my opinion, to use one with two market. But not everyone likes putting a farmer in their team, which is understandable. But that's why I have a boss team that isn't that doesn't have the farmer in it. So, it's kind of my reason behind this. And meet the uh, Deep Maiden. Deep Maiden has a special item that if you... Uh, I, you have to, I think you either have the binder or kill over something specific, but I think it's a bind. If you know what bind, please mention. I, it's either arms or let. It's either arms or head. I can't remember at the moment. Uh, same weaknesses as the deep medium. It's just stronger. And otherwise, it doesn't seem to have too. I don't think it has anything new on it. So I'm just gonna test if it has any elemental weaknesses and facts and see how that goes. I also need to remember to forge Vincent's weapon, so at least he's more useful when he's uh, doing his physical attacks. Uh, it doesn't have a fire weakness. Uh, yeah, just... Okay, that thing instantly died. Yeah, same basic weak... Physical weakness to everything, it's just... Not that hard. They did increase that monster's defense so that the weakness would be less, uh... Recognized. Otherwise, it's the same old, same old. Not really anything right now, so just keep it in mind. Uh, I'm gonna check it out anyway, so let's see. As you wander the Undersea Temple, you come across something like a, a mural at, the, at a dead end. Two of three motifs in the shape of an equilateral triangle are too faded to make out. The, uh, the right portion, which you can see clearly, depicts people living in a city. So, okay, we got... Got a mural. And I'm mostly gonna remember what this is by looking back at this and editing, but this is... People in a city. Okay, and finally meet the Deep Raider. If you can beat the Deep Raider with a slam attack, which none of my characters have, but if you can beat the Deep Raider with a slam attack, he'll give you his special item. 
Uh, otherwise, he's also not really new. Same as the Deep Marine, they they put these sets here to make uh, let you recognize the difference between the two. Essentially, he just has more HP, and he has the same tactics. It's really nothing new. So I'm just going to go ahead and use Typhoon Bolt Epic Charge combo, which is almost the same as Hellfire Epic Charge and Absolute Zero Absolute Char uh, Epic Charge except with Lightning. And it will get you, I'll give you a chance to see what it does. So, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Typhoon Bolt. And that's what it looks like. Very basic. It doesn't look threatening at all, really. It's, it, I believe it's still a multi-hit attack like the other two. I don't... It didn't look like it, but it is, so... The upper and lower ones, I think. Uh, it's... it's over back, Curse Knight. Oh, boy. This is, I mean, this isn't hard, really. It's just a little bit annoying. Otherwise, yeah, this is just not hard. Basic fights. The Cursed Knights are really easy, because I'm using a magical person. When you're using a physical team, is when the Cursed Knights just... You know, just the grandeur of all things you don't want to face. So don't worry too much about it, in my opinion. Look, he had like less than 4 HP left, which is interesting. Uh, is there really a shortcut here, or am I just being stupid about it? I, be, I must be really stupid about it. There might be shortcuts between these, I don't think so though. <coughs> uh, yeah. This happened. Uh, remember what I said, that you have to kill these other spawns fast, otherwise they'll group together? Uh, when three of them come up like this at once, you actually do want to kill them as fast as you can. And that means no, uh, make no haste, just go straight for the binary thunder is what I'm gonna do. Uh, Gandra, you use free arm. well, no, one of them is probably gonna use the burn. I just know it, so forget that for this turn. Binary thunder, kill the marine, because he's probably gonna cover for one of them. Hint, hint. Uh, the... When they're grouped up like this, it'll take them a little bit before they, uh, before they merge together, but they will merge together eventually, so you do want to kill them fast. And I mean fast, don't, uh, don't linger too long, otherwise it really is not in your favor to wait that long, so just, just remember that. So long as you kill them relatively fast, they won't merge together, but they do, it's just their thing. So, now that we've got mass items, which is what Vincent's also doing for us, is that his, his waste knots back in, so we're getting items like crazy again. Uh, I'm gonna check the southern wall as we go by. Do 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 nothing. Okay, great. And we go straight back and loop around. I'm gonna be cutting out, like, a lot of this, uh, uh swerving mumbo jumble and just show you the sets I've been fighting recently. Because I know going, this, uh, mapping the upward part was kind of useless and there wasn't anything there, so... Yeah, that's why if there was a random jump cut here, that's... That's what it was. Alright, this set's annoying. And I mean really annoying. I'm glad we got a, a preemptive strike and I'm glad we can't get blindsided by this. Getting blindsided by this is just annoying. So I'm just gonna go take care of the Deep Maiden. The Batarmogens will be severely weakened by the Binary Fire, so... They'll be easy to finish off. Well, kind of. To an extent. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Oh, wasted binary. I'm kind of pro at wasting my binaries, but that's okay, too. More gold conicles and a caster's eye. That's nice, too. Uh, there's still a few new uh, enemies around on this floor. I think there's at least one more. So is this, this another mural? Looking at its dead end, you spot a decoration unlike anything you've seen thus far. In the center is a ring-shaped depression. It seems though something fell from here. You think back, trying to remember if you picked up a ring that might match this indentation. Uh, fit, okay, fit your ring into it. <clears throat> you apply the silver ring you picked up previously into the depression in the wall. The silver ring sl uh, slips into the recessed area if, as if being stuck inside, completing the artwork. Just then, the bottom of the wall opens up like a drawer, revealing a piece of equipment inside. Wisdom earring. Ooh, yay, 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 I love these things. Uh, Wisdom Rearing gives you, like, 5 tech, which is amazing. And it's totally worth the, uh, the event you had to go through to get the thing, so I like it a lot. So, Zara! Well, Star Bandana is just giving you 1 TP and not too much defense. And I could really use that- oh, whoops. I could really use that 5 tech to boost to 69. 
So, sacrifice a little bit of defense and a little bit of TP for better tech? I'll go for it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm totally all- I'm all for getting more tech and just for the slight, uh, lack of defense. And we're finally getting- we finally got rid of that star bandana. We're something a lot more worth it. Oh, great, I fooies. Uh, these ones are up in the open. I don't remember what, exactly what these ones are. Because they're not the red ones, but they are aggressive. And it did spawn at the end of this three uh, long hallway, so... I'm just gonna mark it, and we're gonna run. I knew there was an F way somewhere around here, but I also know there's a shortcut around here somewhere. Connecting back to this little loop over here. So, hang on, I think it's like right around on this wall right here. Yeah, it's right here. Really, game? You're gonna put it right here? Is this one way? No, it isn't. Thank goodness, right? So that makes it extremely easy to get back here, so I'm not gonna complain. And when we come back, the FOE is no longer on our case, or is it? It isn't. Alright, so that's a relief. And we get to go through this door unhinged, and I keep mapping wrong today, but that's fine. So, right through door. And I think where that's gonna take us, yes, yeah, straight to this hall. Uh, you reach the rectangular room in the northern area of the floor. As you know, square pictures of the deep ones are drawn on the walls, but you see no telltale gra engraving. Still, the hall's location is consistent with the place in Olympia spoke of. It may be best to give this hall a thorough examination. The thing you're looking for is in the center of the hall. Uh, if, you, if you map this out, you're gonna find that it's an odd, uh, it goes off on an odd span, so... Essentially, just go straight next to this door and go up. And here's the, uh, the Eerie statue, so I'm guessing the Penser statues were necessary for 100% completion. Uh, to get the Eerie statue special item, you have to hit it with a Pierce attack. Uh, it has an 80% chance of dropping it if you do that. And I do have plenty of people with Pierce, so I'm not too afraid. They're weak to the elements, I think. Might be to a specific one, so we're gonna check that out. Mina is just get Mina's just gonna give us the, uh, these items left and right anyway, so I'm not too concerned, really, about whether or not we're gonna get these items or not. And it didn't seem to be weak to ice, so we're just gonna get two hold rocks, really. It's not that hard to get these items, really. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, the statues are, I'm guessing, are weak to the Pierce attack. Heck, but they didn't seem to have weakness to ice. We're gonna check other elemental weaknesses later. Uh, we have a item point right here. It's a take point. The others on this floor are also gonna be a take point. The next floor is where it's all gonna be all mixed up. And right here is the event to the, of which we're gonna use the Ivan Gazi power. Well. Wow. Got blindsided successfully, nevertheless. All right, test weaknesses for fire. Just test weaknesses. No, they're weak to the. No, they're not weak to the elements. They'd have less resistance to the elements, but they don't seem to be weak to the elements, which is kind of weird. But oh, whatever. No, no, they have normal. Uh, they have, they're, they're just normally affected by the elements, and they just have high resistance to normal attacks. I'm getting it backwards already. Really? Already? Alright. All people who can use Pierce, hit the one that is blind. Jeez. Oh. Nice. Well, Vincent can't do Pierce, so if he attacks and he kills it- Oh, the sweet eyes. Oh, I should've been paying attention. Okay. Kill that. Awesome, more hold rocks for everyone. They do have regular items, so I'm going to need to stop getting their hold rocks, but if it wasn't for the fact that you get their hold rocks so easily, I would. Uh, th here's the event of which we're going to need to use the item guide to powder. We're not allowed to continue out of this room until we do this, and we're going to have to go back to the deep city after we do this anyway, so what have you. You stand here, uh, you stand before the engraving and inspect it for any clues, but you're, but you see only the now familiar etching of the deep ones, with no writing anywhere to be found. Suddenly you recall the mysterious powder of Ivan Gazi. You received from Olympia. I believe you can do it for every wall, but this is the spot. It occurs to you that using the powder here might reveal what you seek. Use the powder of Ivan Gazi. Oh, this thing. When you spread the powder around you, your field of vision warps and flickers. Mysterious letters float revealed underneath the paint on the wall. It's a written message utterly unknown to you, but a strange voice in your head translates. I am the entity Exidral. I came to this world by the pitch black sea as did the evil. Zarnan, you are here by my will because there is knowledge you must receive. The Deep Ones, servants of the evil, would try to defeat me to protect their master. 
For this, the Deep Ones have devised a method to, uh, to control a human through e the evil's blood. We're going to figure out who that is when we go Armored Root. Or, actually, if we continue this route, we know exactly who that is, but... That's spoilers, so I'm going to drop it. By their proxy, they seem to get to the, uh, catch the Abyssal King unawares... Typo? What, King unaware and destroy me? I don't know if it's supposed to be unawares or if it's supposed to be unaware, but that seems like a typo. Uh, the human... You know an arm road is evil ridden. It is using your kind to attempt to slay me. Okay, human you know an arm mode. Uh, the game... I'm missing the game designers guessed that you were supposed to think that was either Gutrun or uh, Kajra. It might be both. I don't remember. I think it's Gutrun that's talking about, though. So, this, the tree's t telling you right up Gutrun's evil. It is using your kind to attempt to slay me. Remember... Well, that evil's blood warps humans and turns them foul. Your eyes will deceive you. And that's the knowledge that Yggdrasil has given us. The seemingly auditory hallucination suddenly disappears and your sense returns to normal. It seems the effects of the, of the powder of Avangazi is worn off. Having fulfilled your mission to read the engraving, you should return to the Celestial Palace. I'm going to quickly get this uh, room mapped out so I don't have to again. Because you don't want to be mismapping. Okay, I've just been tooting useless advice that's been cut. Alright, after mapping the rest of that room out, apparently we're allowed to continue? But, I'm guessing it's about time we, uh, ended off this episode anyway. Uh, let's go to the Celestial Palace, and, you know what, actually, yeah, I'll do Celestial Palace next episode. Hey guys, this has been Live Break. Uh, as always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see, say bye now. Bye!